Hello and welcome to Brian's Got Game. I'm Brian. Today I've got a game called Niagara. Niagara is a three, three to five player strategy game published by Rio Grande Games and won the prestigious Spiel des Jahres in 2004. It is not surprising this game still holds up 12 years later. In this game, players are paddling their canoes up and down the Niagara River collecting gems. But beware, the most valuable gems are near the waterfall and your canoe might just end up going over Niagara Falls. So, let's check it out, and I'll show you how to paddle your canoes, collect gems, and hopefully avoid the waterfall in Niagara. To set up, <clears throat> each player picks a color and places their canoes on the dock. So we've got red, green, blue, and yellow. Each player assumes their spot on their place area on the board here green and red place the rainmaker tile token on the zero space and you give a random player the life preserver token then you place seven of each kind of gem in their little gem slot so we've got pink blue brown, purple, and white. Then you take the river tokens, place them like so. There are nine of them, so you place them on here. Make sure that one's like slightly towards one more area so it goes that way. That one, that one, that one. Do this so you have two extra. When the river moves, place one on, slide it, and it pushes one off, grab that, and then you're ready. Notice how this has changed position, so when you do it again, it pushes off the other side. You are now ready to begin. So, the each round is cut into four phases. First phase is the paddle phase. So each person takes their paddle cards, tokens, their nice cardboard. So they look at their tokens and they choose which one they want to use. Um, these tokens move your boat or boats. You have one through six and a rain rainmaker token. So if you have one boat, your boat moves that many. And if you have two boats, those boats move that. You have to move all of your spaces, like if I played a three, I'd have to move three in one direction, no backtracking or changing directions. The rain rainmaker token uh, means you get to move this. This makes this go negative one, plus one, or plus two, but you only move it one slot. So there's that. So everybody chooses their token and faces it place, uh, place face down. Okay, then starting with the first player, this is phase two, with the first player is the person with the life preserver token. They flip their token and they do that. So this yellow player, they take one of their canoes and moves it six. One, two, three, four, five, six. They're gonna move here. Then clockwise goes to this player. He also moves six and he's gonna go here. And then this player, red, is going to move three. And then this green player is going to move the right. They're going to make it plus one. Okay, so the lowest pedal card was three. So the river is going to move three, but you also look at the weather and it's plus one. So this river is going to move four. So people might go off the edge of the river. So movement one, two, Three and four. Cute. Okay, so two of our brave explorers just went over the waterfall. So they lose their canoes and they have to buy them back. You spend one gem to get it back. However, neither of them have gems. So these are lost. They have to buy them back. So now they have to use those. So the river has moved, and that phase is over. Now 
Phase 4 is giving up the life preserver and it moves clockwise. Now this player's dead. So now everybody picks up their remaining paddle cards. So this person doesn't have 6, 6, 3, and the right. So now everybody looks. And... Everybody chooses their paddle cards. Okay, so now phase two, you reveal your paddle cards. So blue player goes two. Red player goes four. So when picking up gems, gems cost two action points. So this person gets to go four. So they're gonna go one, two, three, four. So he, red player has loaded their canoe. Unloading also cost two. So now the green player goes three. And then the yellow player goes five, two, three, four, five. Everybody's moved their canoes. Now the river moves. Two plus one is three. So we go one, two, and three. Sometimes moving the river can be a little hazardous. So then the final stage, base, let's go to that. Now everybody, once again, chooses their paddle okay. cards. Now this player flips this over and they move six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So this player unloads, well not unloads, but they get their blue gem. So the red player gets their first gem. So now, green moves one. They're gonna move this one. When you have two canoes on the river, you can move them in either direction, but they have to continue. Um, and they both move the number. So if he, if green did six next turn, both canoes could move six, six each. Yellow is going to go three, one, two, three. And then blue is going two. Blue was thinking about going one, two, filling up. But he sees that he has a stealing opportunity by going one, two, and stealing their gem. Now, next turn, since green has, well, let's move the river. So the river goes one, no, two, it goes two. One, two. So now, green has a stealing opportunity from the blue player by going two, unless green has already played two, since they have the top possible. So, play continues until one player has four of one type of gem, or one of each gem. That's how you play Niagara. Okay, got my dive here for appearance of pink. So then, what do you think of Niagara? Niagara is a lot of fun. Uh, just when you think that you've won, then the river turns against you, and uh, as well as the other players, uh, and which makes it even harder. So it's a lot of fun. Um, I, I really like how they use the box in this one. Um, that the you know the box is part of the game board, um, and it's really neat how the you know the little discs slide across and then eventually fall off the waterfall. So uh, I really enjoyed this one. This great family game. Component. So you have the really epic wooden canoes painted in the colors, and then it's uh, they have the little holes for the uh, the gems. gems, which are also really cool. They're the plastic uh, fake gems, but th they did a really great job. Yeah, the on gems those. are really nice. It's one of the best uh, gems that I've seen in a game, and and then also to think the, that this was made in two thousand four. And then also you have the wooden. Cloud marker and first player life preserver, and yep. then yeah. So this is a German game. So uh, the you know components are excellent. Uh, a lot of wood bits uh, and the, the little clear things that simulate you know moving the river. Yeah, along. the clear river um, discs. discs. Yep, those are also really nice. Yeah, nice clear, uh, sturdy. Uh, so components easy to slide, and really then also the cardboard cards. Yep. Well, paddle cards. The artwork is. Beautiful. On the box, you have the uh, uh, a cartoony version of the Niagara Falls. Um, on the side, you have like 
cliffs and then the falls and stuff, and then you have the gems, and then on the front you have the guys paddling down the Niagara River. Yeah, as far as Euros go, this one is one of the best. Uh, you know, the, a lot of the, the Euro oh, games are not known uh, for, you know, their artwork. It's usually hand-drawn, not computer-generated, um, but this one looks really good. Uh, there's a, this is a strategy game, so it has a ton of strategy in it. So, which card are you going to play? Which, uh, which direction are you going to go? Which, uh, what winning condition are you going to go for? And who are you going to try to destroy? <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, like you said, there's a lot of different things you can do on this one. One thing that I really like about this game is you have the numbers, one through six, uh, plus the weather card, and you, you, you can't play them again until you've played them all once. Um, so that way you can kind of watch. If you're good at, you know, counting cards and paying attention to what others are doing, you can kind of get an idea of what they're going to do. Uh, and then the weather marker, um, I think in the games that we've played, we haven't utilized it as much, um, but that's really kind of a take that part of this game. You can really make the, the river go faster, uh, or you can make it go slower. Um, and so that adds to the strategy as well. Ah. Uh. It's easy. It's pretty easy for kids. Um, we played it with the four-year-old, and he loved it. Um, he needed a little bit of guidance on which paddle card to play, but other than that, he played it well. Yeah, there's no reading involved. Um, well, as long numbers. as they know the numbers, and I think you know, kids that age know their numbers. Uh, but the strategy involved of okay, you know, am I going to play a one or am I going to play a five? Um, you going to get he, the he blue diamond or the green one. diamond? Wait, yeah, yellow. and and like you said, the you can win with one of each of the diamonds. You can win with four of one type. Four of the same. And then you can win with seven of any. Yeah, and so I think the younger kids will, you know, latch onto one of those and just make that their goal rather than thinking, well, uh, uh, you know, maybe I should go after, you know, a different winning con condition. Uh, but you're right, this is a good family game, uh, really easy rules, uh, easy to learn. And kind of unforgettable. Yep, yep, this is a good one. We really like Niagara. Overall, it's a really good game. It has really super awesome components. The artwork is beautiful. Um, it has a lot of strategy, but it's still easy for kids. So we love Niagara. Yep. Yep. I'm glad we picked this one up. Uh, even though it is an older title, um, I think you can still pick it up on Amazon and places like that. Um, so if you like Niagara, go check it out. Thank you for watching. Brian's Got Game. Please like us on our Facebook. Send us a tweet at Brian Scott Gaming. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. I'm Brian. This is my dad. See you next time.